So now in this video, we're going to use a single supply op amp. We're going to use the LM358. There's two of them in the integrated circuit. We only need one out of two of them. And it's a single supply. We can just use 5 volts positive and then the negative supply, which is ground. Zero volts right there. Those three, uh, these four lines, I should say, are all connected together. And uh, those three are all connected and those three are all connected. I meant to put dots there because a lot of people don't like when there's lines running across other lines without a dot to indicate a connection. I normally use a little jump anyways instead of the dot. But in any case, they're all connected. Point that out right now. So in any case, the LED will flash on and off. That's why it's an A-stable multivibrator. Ultimately, the output will go from connecting to a ground to connecting as close to five volts as possible, going back and forth between the two. And we got ground there. so the LED will turn on when the output is high, right there. Pretty straightforward. The way that that works, since this is an op amp, we have the non-inverting input on top here. The inverting input down there on the actual component, they are in opposite positions. The inverting input is above the non-inverting input. But here, the non-inverting is above the inverting. So you gotta pay close attention to that when you're building it. In any case, the uh, non-inverting input when you have negative feedback like this it, the op amp tries to keep the voltages the same so you got your set voltage there and uh, so the output goes high or low as needed to try to get that inverting input to the same voltage we do not have a fixed fixed voltage here though you can see we also have positive feedback so what that means when you have positive feedback is that it's going to swing one way or the other. It's not going to be 2.5 volts. It's going to go from uh, above that to below that, back and forth, depending on what we have at the inverting input. So that's going to be changing because we have the capacitor. So ultimately, if we have a lower voltage at the non-inverting input, then we're going to have a low output. That's going to pull the voltage down at the inverting input with a capacitor. So the capacitor voltage is going to change. It's not going to be a sudden uh, voltage. So it's going to drop down until it reaches that lower voltage. And uh, then we'll have a lower voltage at the inverting input. That will set the output high. And uh, because we have a higher voltage there, sets it high. And we have an even higher voltage to reach. So we have that lower voltage and we have a high output there to raise the voltage and it has to raise farther. So it's like a Schmidt trigger that we looked at uh, before. It keeps bouncing back and forth. We'll look at that later. But in case, these value components work out well. I have a 10 kilo ohm for everything but the resistor and the uh, timing. And then uh, the timing uh, resistor. So if you want to go slower, you can use a higher value or quicker or a lower value. Same with the capacitor, 10 microfarad. A uh, lower value, if the resistor is the same, will go faster. A higher value will go slower. You can balance them out for the timing you want. I like the timing that we have right now with this. So, really, that's about it for this circuit. And uh, let's look at it on the board. Here you can see the 5 volts at the supply. Limited current to 20 milliamps from the power supply. But uh, we're nowhere near that. Looks like we're getting about uh, 6 milliamps when the LED is lit up. So it is quite a bit uh, crowded here. So we will zoom in and uh, take a look at uh, what we got going on. So here is the uh, fixed value resistors to the, uh, they're both 10 kilo ohms, to the non-inverting input right there. We got the inverting input and then the output right there. And so we have a couple feedbacks from the output. I'm going to uh, turn the power off and remove them really quickly so that we can see a little easier. Up here we have the 10 microfarad capacitor. So this side is uh, the uh, negative side of it. It's polarized. You have to put it in the right direction or you risk uh, damaging it uh, if you charge it. So we have that to the inverting input right there. And our load, we have the LED 220 ohm resistor. It's going up one spot above that jumper, the long lead of the anode. That has to be more positive for it to light up. Short lead the cathode right there to the negative rail right there. Cathode needs to be more negative for it to light up. So we have that there. Now we're going to take 
the other. These are 10 kilo ohms and uh, we're going to take the other 10 kilo ohms and we're going to feed back the output. So when it goes high or low, it changes the voltage to the non-inverting input right there, which is the target that uh, when you have negative feedback, the voltage that it tries to reach. So it's going to push it in opposite directions from what it was before when the output changes. Now we have a 100,000 ohm resistor, 100 kilo ohms. That's going to the output top pin to the inverting input right there. And that is it for uh, wiring it up. Not too complicated, especially if you're looking at the schematic while you are doing so. So we'll zoom back and make sure it works really quick. And uh, there you go. Okay, yeah, the capacitor took a little while to charge to the voltage that it had to. But now it's bouncing between a couple voltages. So we're good to go. So now, as always in this uh, video series, I try to remember to show voltages. And uh, so the other end of that cable from my pocket oscilloscope, we have uh, the alligator clips. I clip them to jumper so I can easily move them to take measurements at uh, different areas. And uh, we'll zoom in. So first, we will look at the voltage at the non-inverting input. And uh, remember, the output of the op amp when you have negative feedback does what it can to hold the voltages equally and uh, so this is the uh, positive feedback that's the output or what the voltage I should say the output tries to uh, match right there so that's our goal really as you can see it is a changing goal and so it's a bit crowded here and I have a uh, resistor already in the inverting input so I'll just kind of slide that in carefully and now we're looking at the voltage of the capacitor charging and discharging thanks to that feedback so it's reaching those two uh, same points so when the uh, non-inverting input is high it raises the voltage until they match and then the output goes low it sets the uh, non-inverting input even lower the inverting input has to uh, lower through feedback it takes time because of the capacitor right there uh, pretty straightforward uh, not too complicated once you study it a little bit, uh, so hopefully it made sense. But in any case, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out one of the other ones that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Uh, donate to Patreon if you can. I have links down in the description. Uh, but just watching many videos as you can helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I will see you in the next video.